everybody, uh, Mike here again, and um, I've made some progress on my um, Oculus Rift plugin for the X for X Plane. So um, I forgot to give you a little bit of a tour of it. So let's go and let's jump right in and do a little flying. All right. Okay. So here I am flying over uh, New York City. Uh, that's Central Park, actually, right at the 12 o'clock position. And um, as you can see, I fixed my bug from last time when I did a video here. The camera is keeping up very nicely with the airplane, and I can look all around and, uh, you know, bank the plane and everything. And uh, everything just kind of keeps up with it. I gotta say, it's really, really realistic. Um, in fact, you know, you probably noticed me doing the thing that pilots do where they speak with like these long pauses in between what they're saying and stuff. And I find myself unconsciously trying to lean around, lean forward to look um, to get a better view out the windshield and stuff here. Um, it's really, a, really immersive, and um, it's it's really, really good. And it just looks great. Uh, it it looks, you know, I've I've actually flown um, over this part of New York City in a Cessna before, and it looks just like this. Uh, well, not just like this, but I mean everything just looks the way it should if you were flying over. New York City like this in a, in, a, in a small little Cessna. So, um, so let's see here. Let me let me tell you a little bit about what's going on here. So, um, you know, I spent a lot of time here fighting with the X-Plane SDK, actually. And um, if it wasn't for the help of some guys on IRC, on the xplane.org IRC, uh, IRC server, um, in particular Black Phoenix, I don't think I would have anything ready to show you right now. Um, the X-Plane is really great, but their plugin SD, their plugin uh, API is just not that well documented and a little bit inconsistent. And um, you know, if you, it's one of those things where if you haven't done it before, you just may not know what to do, um, or you might fall into a whole bunch of pitfalls. So um, you know, so special thanks uh, to Black Phoenix who really helped me out a lot here. Um, you know, if it wasn't for him sharing some of his code with me and giving me, getting me straightened out when I was lost, um, we wouldn't have this working as well as it is. Um, so, like, one of the things that screwed me up is that um, the 3D cockpit view in X-Plane actually um, likes to tilt everything down. I guess that's so that you can see your, uh, your, co your instruments all the time, but when you're in VR, you want, you know, straight ahead, like I'm looking straight ahead right now to be straight ahead, and um, that would kind of screw things up. So what we're actually looking at here is the I have the camera in, in chase mode as if we we're flying like in chase plane mode in third perfect person perspective. And then what I'm doing is I'm forcing the camera to be inside the cockpit, and I had to kind of hack the uh, rendering code a little bit um, to do that, uh, to draw like the you know the the cockpit and everything. But one of the nice little side effects of that is that. Um, what I when they when the planes when the planes being drawn in chase plane mode, you get a little virtual body inside a little virtual pilot inside the cockpit, um, and that actually is really nice in VR. Like for instance, if I look kind of out the window here, or like it's even better this way. When I look out the window, you know I see my this virtual shoulder that you can see in this on on the screen right where my real shoulder is. The same thing goes over there. Um, the, perfor the proportions are about right. The legs are about where my legs are. The arms are about where my arms are. So you know they don't move. Or, they don't move yet. Like you see, the yoke just moves independently of them. But um, you know, it's it really helps to sell the illusion. It's it's kind of jarring when when you, especially when you first use a VR system and you kind of hold your hands up in front of you or something and you don't see that reflected in the virtual world. Doing things like that really adds to the immersion here. Um, Another thing I added is, uh, I think last time I mentioned how the, the, the yaw sensor, the, the yaw gyro, will kind of drift a little bit over time. Um, let me get myself straight low here. So what I've done here is I've added a reset button. Just a, It's a command that you can map to any button on your keyboard or your yoke or whatever. You hit that and it just resets the orientation of the Oculus. So as I'm flying just every once in a while, I'll hit that and, um, you know, and it'll fix things out. It'll fix everything. So I've done, um, you know, some just buzzing around, and also some things like, you know, trying to do like ground reference maneuvers and um, and uh, and take off some landings and pattern work and stuff. And the Oculus really, I mean, having it in VR really, really helps. Um, it's it, it 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 is much easier to maneuver. It's much easier to see where you are relative to the surroundings. You know, 
some people like on IRC or on various forums have, have compared, have asked like what the difference is between this and track IR. And I don't know, track IR kind of, in my opinion, I've never used it, but it, the head tracking that track IR gives you is probably very, very important. But this is, is I think this is a different animal because when I'm in this VR headset, you know, and I'm looking around and everything is, you know, where it is, where it would be in real space, it feels like I'm actually flying over, actually flying over New York City, you know, in an actual airplane. I mean, obviously everything's computer generated and stuff, but like, it does have a feeling of space and realness that, you know, you wouldn't get if you were just, if all you had is, is head tracking. Um, yeah, let's head down here, down the East River here. Um, so I think that's pretty much it. Um, I think the next thing I'm going to be working on here is trying to get rid of Ibex. Um, my big problem right now is that the latency is actually kind of bad. Um, I've kind of adjusted to it, but when I first started flying it, the latency was really kind of throwing me off and um, you know making it just kind of uncomfortable to fly. I've acclimated to it, but you know that's not a good thing, and it it should be much better than it is. And you know it's, it's all because the distortion for the rift is happening outside of X-plane is happening in the second program. So probably the next thing I'm going to try to do is take a look at the graphics code, the graphics APIs and stuff, and see if I can, um, if I can, if I can uh, hack it so that this Oculus rendering is happening within X-plane. Um, like for instance, if you look down here at the, at the mixture control, when I move it around, it's lagging behind like what I'm physically doing with the little mixture control on my, on my uh, yoke. Um, you know, and that just affects like everything. Like when you turn, there's a, there's a little bit of a delay. Your, your brain's kind of hardwired to know when, um, you know, when what you're seeing out of your eyes isn't lining up or isn't, you know, aligned with what your ear hears or what feels or what your, your brain is expecting. And that just kind of leads to, at best, discomfort and at worst, um, simulator sickness. So um, that's the thing that I'm going to try and figure out some way to fix as fast as I can. Um, and then after that, maybe stereo rendering or, you know, something else. So my camera died there before uh, I was able to finish saying everything I wanted to say. So um, I'm going to put an alpha build up on my website, um, a new alpha, alpha 2. Um, so you can all mess around with what I've got so far. Um, I've heard requests for a uh, Windows build, so I'll see about getting one of those, uh, figuring out how to build it on Windows so that you Windows guys can use it. And, um, and yeah, keep on working, and I'll, you know, try and make progress on the stuff I mentioned uh, a little bit earlier. So, until next time, catch you later. Bye.